Where do you think your your passion to be a spokesperson and ambassador for women's cycling comes from? I definitely think it stems from societal views of young women. You always have to be better than, you can't just support one another. And that never sat well with me. Like I would go to an event and be like, oh, do you think you're faster than so-and-so? And I didn't really care. I was like, oh, there's another girl I get to ride with? Cool. I didn't like how the outside world was trying to pin women against each other. Joining us in the studio today is an American road cycling athlete and founder of LA Sweat. She also helps brands in the cycling industry with PR and media. She is sometimes described as the bad acidor of cycling for women. Please welcome Kelly Sam. Hey, Kelly. Hi, how's it going? Oh, so good. So good to see you and so glad that we're both in freezing cold Chicago. You know, man, zero degrees was, today, can't wait. <laughs> It was zero when we woke up, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> How crazy is that? And if you were in Los Angeles, did you check the weather in Los Angeles? I did not. I stopped doing that years ago when I moved away. That's <laughs> good. It's too depressing. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks for agreeing to be on it. Yeah, um, thanks for so having you're in me. Chicago. I'm in Chicago. We're probably like a mile away from each other, right? I think we are probably like maybe two. Yeah. It's funny. I know you asked if... Uh, if you should come into the office for this. And it was funny that you're the first person that asked us that. Um, and I'm not prepared for live interviews, yet, <laughs> just virtual. You got to change that up because you never know who might be down the street. Totally. I got to figure that one out. So maybe, will you, give, will you be my guinea pig for my first live interview? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Okay. Well, Kelly, you know, you already know the sort of general premise of the show. We ask a few foundational questions. We do the speed round. We talk about your career in cycling and then, and then about how you might give back in community. So let's kick things off with the basics. Where were you born? I was born in lovely Boise, Idaho, which no one ever guesses. <laughs> Yeah, especially with L.A. Sweat being the team name. Yes. I like to say I was raised in Idaho, but I grew up in L.A. What did your parents do growing up? My mom worked for an orthopedic surgeon, just real, you know, American single mom family. <laughs> and what kind of activities were you into as a kid, either athletic or musical? Like what kept you busy outside of education? Um, outside of education, which mind you, I was not really that into, uh, I was a dancer. So I started dancing when I was three years old and I hung up my dancing shoes when I was around 20. Wow. So ballet you... and jazz and modern, everything, every realm of dance you could think of. Why'd you hang up the shoes? Um, later I would find out because I had a genetic deformity of the bones in my body, but I was told multiple times, like, you don't have this to be a professional dancer. You don't have this. So it kind of, when you're that young, you just kind of listen to the people that are older than you. Yeah. Interesting. Do you miss dancing? I do. I dance in my living room all the time. Okay. So you hang up your shoes in your dance career mm -hmm. and... Then did you start writing or what was the transition like from no, dancing I to writing? I moved to Seattle. I became a hairdresser, barber. And early, early on in the fixed gear world and phenomenon, I had some friends that were part of Mecca Frama. I don't know if you're familiar. It's before I, MASH. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not th I'm not that cool. Um, and they were like, Kelly, you should get a bike so you can ride bikes with us. And I was like, okay. I think of that group of people, I'm the only one that still rides a bike. <laughs> Interesting. And a hairdresser. Tell me about being a hairdresser. What, what caused that pivot and why'd you leave that? It's pretty cool. I was always a really creative kid and I always didn't do well traditionally with, um, traditional learning and skills. So I could watch somebody do something and recreate it immediately. Uh, so 
I really wanted to be creative in that way and work with my hands when I got out of high school. I also didn't want to waste money on a four-year college on something I knew I wasn't going to be interested in. Um, Yeah, so I did that. And then that took me into doing hair for film and movies and music videos and runway shows. And that's what took me to L.A. A quick scan of your Instagram page (laughs) told me you love art and design. Love art and design. And fashion. Yes. yes. Tell me more about that. I mean, it's such a an incredible way of self-expression. Fashion is something that, like I see as art, is always objective. People, one person might hate something and 10 other people might love it. And it's a way to yeah. just really be yourself and express yourself in a way that I think traditionally you're not really encouraged to do. Are you also a creator in some capacity off the bike? Oh yeah, for sure. So everything that you see involved with LA sweat, I have created. Awesome. Also look, the feel, the every, everything around it. I touch (laughs) all self-taught, like you're teaching yourself illustrator and Photoshop and just banging it out and I have really good friends that will either sit down with me and they can take the things out of my brain and put them in or teach me how to do it. Yeah. I, I've got to ask only because it's so top of mind right now in modern modern news, but artificial intelligence, are you a fan or not a fan and how it might change the art world? I haven't even paid attention, honestly. I'm a, oh my God. I'm a fan of things made with people's hands, painting, sculpture, anything like that. So yeah, I'm I'm a real right. tangible person. <laughs> well, next time you're in the Chicago office, let's talk about AI. I want to show you some cool things. Okay, let's do it. It's scary, but it's cool. I'll be there soon building some bikes. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Well, let me know in advance. Um, okay, so you're... You're you're in Seattle, you're doing hair, you're doing your styling for films, you're getting into that scene. And then did you move to LA after that? Yeah, I moved to LA kind of like right in the middle of all of that. I was getting more work on film, like working on production. So it made sense for me to move to LA. And then that's when I really fell in love with bikes and riding. Yeah. Do you remember... Prior to that, did you think you were going to go sort of full on into movies in Hollywood and I had no thought in my head, like one day I'm going to ride a bike or own a cycling team. I was like full on the path of becoming like just doing hair, getting my um, union card for the film industry. Like I really wanted to deep dive into that. That's so cool. Okay, before we jump into that piece of your career, let's <laughs> let's let's go into the speed round here. Okay. This is the official unofficial changing gear psych profile where I throw 14 or 15 this or that's at you. Oh, I prepared. To see what you like. You, you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. I delete I deleted one question though, so it might trip you up. What if we deleted the same question cuz I also deleted one question or I didn't Ooh. answer one question. Ooh. Well, let's, let's, let's see, let's, let's see. see how it goes. Yeah. I'm just not going to ask you the question. So right. let's see. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Tacos or burritos? Tacos only. Only. Um, spicy or mild? Spicy. Cold weather or hot weather? <sighs> this one's hard. Um, I like f- four full seasons. Okay. Like it. You know, answers, you know, not specific are also good. So that's, that's great. I couldn't just rain or snow. Yeah. Rain or snow. Sleet. <laughs> <laughs> While riding. Yeah. I don't mind actually. Really? I love a rainy ride. Mountains or the beach. Mountains for sure. Sand is horrible. Cities or suburbs. Cities. Cars or trucks. Team van. Yeah. Pavement or dirt? Uh, pavement that turns into dirt. 
Sure. Gloves are gloveless? Gloveless, always. Man, more and more people I'm finding are going gloveless. Um, Gloves clip- cut off my circulation. Clipped in or flat pedals? Clipped in. Low pressure or high pressure in your tires? Low. Fix it yourself or take it to a mechanic? Fix it myself, always. Cats or dogs? Dogs, 100%. Do I hear a dog in the background? No, because she's a silent little baby. (laughs) What's your dog's name? This is Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Team dog. For all the listeners out there, because we're doing this on both video and audio, um, Kelly's holding up her beautiful team dog. She is a rat terrier dachshund mix. All right. So all of you listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts are going to have to hop over to YouTube and check out Kelly's dog. Um, Kelly, switching over to your career now. So you move from Seattle to LA, you're getting into the movie thing, you're getting your SAG card, you're getting your union card, you're doing, you know, hair and, and makeup for all the stars. And then someone, what, puts a bike in front of you is like, hey, check this out. So I was commuting. I took, when I moved to LA, I had my clothes and my bike. That was it. Um, so I was commuting. I didn't have a car. I, which is like unheard of in LA, didn't have a car in LA. I was like, so anti-car in LA for the longest time. Um, and you just start meeting people. I mean, LA's bike community is so vast and I just started meeting people and more and more and more people. And it was just this really organic progression. And then someone was like, you should do this race with me. And I was like, okay. And what was that race? I skipped over a lot between that, but... (laughs) Do you remember that race? What was that event? It was a mash race. It was a point to point sort of choose your own adventure. Hmm. So team time trial, but you had to create your own route from SF to Sacramento for NABs. Wow. What year was that? Do you remember? Mm, Had to have been 2011, maybe. Maybe. And did you make it? Did you make it to NABS? I did make it to NABS. Was it awesome? It was great. I was the first girl to arrive. And you were hooked. I was hooked. Yeah. And so you go to NABS, you check out all the cool handmade bikes, right? You're drooling mm-hmm. over everything. What, uh, what excited you the most at NABS? Like after riding that distance, what were you excited to do next? Or were you excited about a a new bike. Um, so I was already like into Lycra and doing all that stuff at that point. Um, but that was the first like experience racing. So I was riding, I was going on long rides, I was doing all the things. Um, honestly, I think at NABS was the craftsmanship. I was like so blown away that you could like do all these amazing things to build a bike. It was not something yeah. that I even knew existed. Yeah, it's pretty incredible what those those um builders do these days right yes it is it's i was more drawn to the paint and anodizing and all the design stuff obviously yeah okay so share with us then how does how does la sweat get formed um so i guess you could fast track right i was racing fixed gear i started racing red hook i was at this point riding for chinelli Um, I had gotten brought onto their program. Everything was track bikes at this point. And I rolled into golden saddle one day and I was like, I think I want to get a road bike and start road racing. I don't know why, but Mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do. So they helped me out. I got, I'm sort of a dive deep in quickly type of person. So immediately got a coach started racing crits. I was like, this is what I want to do. And I wanted to take it really seriously. So that's when I decided that maybe standing on my feet for eight hours a day was not the best way to get fast on a bike. Right. So I decided to kind of walk away from my job and really start from scratch. Started working in a bike shop, then started working for Rita bikes in Venice. Um, Spencer brought me on and was like, 
can I teach you how to paint bikes? It was like my dream. I was like, of course it's bikes and I get to be creative. I get to do all these things. Yeah. Um, so I did that. So that started, I went to him and I said, I want to do a women's team. Like at the time in LA, there were two club teams that were huge, but none that I really felt connected to. I come from team sports, like as much as people think, dance is not a team sport. It very much is, especially right. in the way that I did it. Um, so I just sort of was like, let me do this thing. And then I contacted, you know, other sponsors that I had from racing fixed gear. And I was like, I want to do this team. And they were all like, okay. I remember showing up to Interbike one year, first year I had my like paper deck and I was like <laughs> passing it out to everybody. <laughs> um, and that formed the Rita women's team. Um, and as that grew, we got to go to Ireland and like do all these incredible things just based really off of the branding and social media that I was doing behind it. So I wanted to, I saw a gap, right? So like it was the era of specialized Lululemon and we had this amazing team in the U S but nobody knew how to get there. Yeah. Right. Like it was always you're an anomaly. You're this like phenom rider that you just happen to get into cycling. And there was no space for in the in-between, right? Especially coming from Southern California, which already has a very like strong cycling and racing community. People are totally happy staying there their whole lives and racing every weekend in an industrial park. And they're like, this is the best thing ever. Um, so I was like, oh, all these kids are so ugly. None of these teams seem like very fun. They were fun. The people were great, but like, I just didn't feel connected. And so I went to Chinelli and I was like, I want to start a national level women's crit only team. Yeah. And they were like, we're in. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had no idea what I was doing. No idea what it would entail. Um, and then I sat down with uh, some friends from Manual for Speed. I had been doing a bunch of adventure stuff with them on the Yonder Journal side. And I was like, I'm doing this thing. I need help. Like, what should we call it? And so we went back and forth with a bunch of different names. I was like, I don't want to be Garmin presented by Chase Bank presented by, you know, somebody else. Yeah. I want, I was looking at all of these other sports, right? Like you have the Lakers, you have the, the Bulls, like you have all these huge professional sports that never change their name. Yeah. They are always that fans can become lifelong fans and then you pass it on to your kids and you know, it's like your family is a Bulls fan or your yeah. family, you're the White Sox or your Cubs. Like that's what it is. You don't cross over. I was like, why don't we have that in cycling? So I wanted to do something different, have a really cool kit that wasn't just plastered in logos. Yeah. And born was LA Sweat. At one point, we were going to be the Wombats. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> the Wombats. I'm glad we went with LA Sweat. It made me really uncomfortable at first, but that kind of was the point too, because there weren't women's teams that were viewed as strong and fast and like athletes. Yeah. Did you ever think about merging with another women's program no. instead of starting from the beginning and starting from scratch? No. Yeah. Where do you think your, your passion to be a spokesperson and ambassador for women's cycling comes from? From the fixed gear world, for sure. Like yeah. when I started, there was maybe like five of us and we were always pinned against each other. Like I would go to an event and people like, oh, do you think you're faster than so-and-so? And I didn't really care. I was like, oh, there's another girl I get to ride with? Cool. You know, like I didn't like the, how the outside world was trying to pin women against each other. Yeah. And so I was just like, I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> if nobody else is going to do it. I'm going to do it myself. If you don't mind, I'd like to push a little deeper on that. Does it go back to your childhood and being raised by a single mom 
are the roots there? Oh, probably not. If I'm like, if I think about it, I don't ever think I I don't think I've ever thought about it that deeply. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think it stems from societal views of young women, right? Like you always have to be better than you can't just support one another. And yeah. that never sat well with me. It's awesome. I love, I love hearing founder stories like this that, you know, challenge, you know, the perceptions of society. It's great. Um, okay. So LA sweat is formed, not the wombats. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> Although the logo, I mean, the logo could have been cool. Maybe. I don't think it could have evolved the way that LA sweat has evolved. LA sweat's cool. It, 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 Cause it can mean so many different things. And of course there's the, it really was too. Like I wanted to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. That first couple of years, the the hesitation that you heard from announcers was hilarious because women weren't supposed to sweat. Yeah. Right. They weren't supposed to be hard. You know, they had to glisten and they had to be soft and presentable and palatable for the world. And I was, that was like, no, you have to say that we sweat. Yeah. Tell us about the confusion though that that came with the name. So some people say LA sweat, some people say La Sweat. You say say whatever you want to say, but officially it's LA Sweat, right? Officially it is LA Sweat. But you'll take either. I'll take either at this point. Yeah. Cool. So LA Sweat starts and what you recruited a couple of your best friends and then it grew? Yeah, I recruited a couple a friend and two people I didn't even know. <laughs> and I think there was like five of us to begin with. And we drove around in my Volkswagen Jetta and went <laughs> across the country multiple times and won races and got our teeth kicked in at others. And it was great. So awesome. Now, Kelly, this is your full-time gig, right? In addition to doing some PR and media for other people in the cycling industry, but but being the general manager, owner, director, sportive, mom, medic, <laughs> logistics manager, it. coach, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Swan year, travel agent. Yes. Cook. Oh, yes. Do you do most um, of the cooking? No, actually, the team is so wonderful. Like everyone pitches in. Some people love to cook, others hate to cook, and they're like, I got dishes. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> That's cool. And tell us about some of your sponsors today, other than the obvious SRAM, but um, although it's not obvious, but who are some of your big sponsors? Um, actually, in 2023, we have some new sponsors coming on that I'm really, really excited about. Obviously, SRAM, Time, Hammerhead are incredible of this the SRAM family of brands. Yeah, um, Zip. Don't forget Zip. We are not on Zip. Oh, you're not on Zip? We are not, no. Oh my goodness. Do I need to talk to someone or is that window closed? You can talk to uh, Declan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are with Hunt. They've been with us for five years. They're incredible. Um, they really align with us on a lot of our similar brand values and yeah. also Victoria Tires. Um, we did also just sign a multi-year partnership with Sun God. So okay. they are an eyewear company based out of the UK. They do a lot of stuff with F1 and sailing. Um, incredible cool. position as well. They're at B Corp, which is really amazing. Um, I just got off the phone with them earlier today. <laughs> do you um, have a helmet sponsor? Yes. So Helmet and Shoes is Giro. They are also a multi-year partnership. It's incredible to see brands really investing years into programs. SRAM is the same way yeah. um, that... It makes you as an athlete and as a team and as riders on the team to really invest in the brands as well, because you know that they're invested in you and what you're doing. Kelly, what's the mission of the team or the vision of the team? The number one rule of the team is be nice. That's it. <laughs> we want a positive race experience for everyone. Um, our mission also is to, to just, it's always been for me, is to use my early success and platform to provide opportunities for women that might otherwise not get the opportunities to race at this level, move up from this level. Um, so we have riders from Mexico City, from Belize, Bermuda, kind of 
all over the U.S. Um, and some of our riders are now in their sixth season. Like they don't leave. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I'll give you a little opportunity to plug the the store, but you've got some cool merch online that's available, right? That you've designed um, yes. for the listeners out there. Where can they? Yeah, where is that hoodie available online? It is sweet. Um, where can people find your cool merch? So it's la sweat dot com backslash shop. Um, So there's a ton of merch up there. You can also follow us on Instagram and we will post random things up there as well. Um, We did, I would show you, but we did just get a bunch of LA sweat ass savers that will be up soon. Um, But they have the new kit design and I can't release that yet. It's secret. Yeah, no. Keep that secret. It's a big thing for us. (laughs) Kelly, it's pretty cool what you're doing. We love stories that, uh, you know, inspire others to, to ride and, uh, so that's really great. You know, obviously, maybe not obvious, but but it's hard, right? Starting a business and going national and recruiting people and traveling is hard. Did you ever hit an obstacle that was so great that you thought, oh my God, I'm done. I need to go back to something else? Every six months. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time, I think. Uh, I think the things that hit me the hardest because I am so invested. This is my baby. I, I probably bad business to some, but like I take things very personally. And when there's roster changeovers or anything like that, I'm always like, did I do something? Like I always feel a little defeated, even though I know that it's part of the process and people change teams sometimes every year. Um, I just want people to have women specifically to have a positive racing experience because I have seen so many people that I admire and care about and are friends with that didn't and they stopped racing. Do you have a mentor? No. If you could choose a mentor or someone to hang out with for advice. Oh, man. Who might it be? Serena Williams. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. That would be so fun. Just the way that she pushes the boundaries within her own space and beyond is incredible to me. Yeah. We're both loud and a little obnoxious, <laughs> which is great. Um, what Was there, a, tell me about the an accomplishment that is most cherished of yours, either a race, a victory a foundation, just anything like what, what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of my team and the fact that we have a junior development team now that is all young women of color and providing opportunities for them to even know what bike racing is. I had no idea bike racing existed until I was in my mid twenties. Yeah. And I definitely didn't know that you could get scholarships for it. I definitely didn't know that there were programs and I absolutely adore them. Like you don't really, not a lot of people like to hang out with 17 year olds, but you give me those four little girls and I'm like, let's go. (laughs) Bike racing can be, especially crit racing can be dangerous. Have you ever had any gnarly crashes? The worst crashes I've had have been like traditional road races. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Um, I think, I think you've been asked this question before in interviews, but, but it's, it's an important one for me to hear, for us to hear, for our listeners to hear. But the question is, if you could change something in the bike industry, either the bike industry itself or the racing community, what would you like to see change? Mm -hmm. That's such a loaded question. Um, (laughs) We could, I could talk about that for hours and hours and hours. Um, There's so many things, right? Like, it's not just as simple as like, oh, there needs to be more women at the table. I think there needs to be more of everyone at the table, more of everyone making decisions. We need to, we want to grow this sport in the US. We've been talking about it since the Lance era. Like, how do we get back? How do we get back? Well, if you aren't listening to the people and if you're just creating more and more barriers to entry, you know, I just, 
this might be controversial, controversial, but USAC just announced that they're going to charge juniors for licenses now. Like they're kids. And a lot of those kids don't have the parents that can, or the ability to buy a license, you know? Um, I know as a kid, I definitely wouldn't have, uh, they're making it harder to register your team They're, you know, it's just one barrier after the next. And I totally understand when I see teams fold, like, I'm like, yeah, it's hard. And I'm in a very privileged position, right? Like I, not only do I have this team, but I've also worked in the industry now for 11 plus years and I have connections and network of people that other people don't have. So I think just listening more would be the first step. Yeah, that's a good one. And and you're right though. I mean, change does need to happen sort of all over at every level. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the diversity piece is also critically important, right? Because people need to see other people that look like them. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that's that's how society works. Even though we are this aspirational society, uh, we look to others, especially pros like yourself. Um, we especially I'm just well, retired. <laughs> yeah, but you're once a pro, always a pro, right? But I but get flat. Just, flat. Yeah, I've never claimed to be a professional. <laughs> but do you agree though that you know? our society puts athletes, especially pros on pedestals and holds them to a, a different standard than absolutely than others. And so and I think women are held to a different standard as well. Right. There's a lot of behaviors that I see from the men's side of the sport that if I did, if I acted in that way, see you later. We right. are held to a way higher standard of professionalism and being palatable for the world. Right. It's and crazy when you think of it. It's like I like spicy food. I don't really like to be that palatable to people if they're being offensive. <laughs> right. When you were racing pro, did you ever miss a call up or come late to a race? I only ever got call ups at Red Hook. Okay. I was never late. I am never late. Yeah. I'm. 30 minutes early. <laughs> Always. Awesome. Let's, uh, I want to learn My more about it. does not allow me to be late. <laughs> <laughs> That's the competitor in you. Yeah. Um, I want to learn more and our listeners I know want to hear more about your development team. Tell us about these juniors that you're working with. So it's sort of evolved. Um, during lockdown, we were like, okay, we have to pivot. We have to, figure out a way to stay relevant and interactive and connected to this community while we're all very stuck at home. So, you know, we did fundraisers and challenges and contests and we were doing, I mean, I think I downloaded every weird communication app you could possibly think of like discord. And we were talking to people while we were on Zwift together and yeah. <laughs> doing all these things. Um, and I came across an organization based here in Chicago called Blackstone Bikes. Disclaimer, we no longer support Blackstone Bikes because they union busted. So we support mm. the union. Um, and we did, we just, we had extra funds, right? We weren't racing, we weren't traveling anywhere, and we were still getting paid from sponsors. And so we took a lot of that, we, myself, it's just me. Um, mm -hmm. I took a lot of those funds and donated them back into the community. So I told any new racer, if they, you know, wanted a license, I would pay for their license or, um, anybody that wanted to go to a specific race that couldn't afford it or, you know, whatever that looked like. And we ended up donating money to Blackstone. Um, and then with that, I just reached out and I said, Hey, if you ever, want to have the the girls that are part of Blackstone, we can do a Zoom call, we can, you know, talk about bike racing, um, and just show them that there are other women in bikes. And uh, that 
was progressing. We did an announcement that we were officially partnering with Blackstone for a junior team. And then the union happened. And I was like, well, that's not going to stop me. So I contacted all of the girls that were part of Blackstone. And I said, do you still want to do this? And they all said yes. And so I started coming to Chicago every month and a half-ish. Yeah. (laughs) Driving in my van from Colorado. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get them their bikes, do skills clinics. I mean, we're not talking young riders that have have parents that ride bikes and they've been riding since they were, you know, super young. Some of them were just introduced to bikes the year prior or even not at all. So we're learning how to clip in. We're learning how to properly wear a helmet. We're learning how to shift. Um, so we would go to the park in Chicago and fall down in the grass together. <laughs> um, and then that first year... So that would have been 2021. They got to do five days of intelligentsia. Um, nice. It was super fun for them. We also did a new writer program that year with corresponding with intelligentsia. So we did a Q&A with not just our juniors, but all new writers that wanted to come. And then we were able to do in-race mentorship for them as well. Amazing. Which was wonderful. And some of those women now that came to our new writer program are cat twos. Amazing. And like wanting to guest ride and ride for us. So it's, it's incredible to see just what like the tiniest bit of effort can do for someone. Um, and now we have two juniors here in Chicago. And then we actually ended up bringing on two young girls from Belize. One is the stepdaughter of one of our elite riders. Cool. If there's a young girl in the audience that's listening in, that's like, wow, that's cool. I want to do that. How do they find you? Send us a message on Instagram. Okay. And I think that's the easiest way for kids to find people these days. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm like, you can email me. No one's going to email me. (laughs) They're going to message me. Do you have like a goal of growing that development team? I really want the development team to be fun first and foremost. I don't think our goal will ever be to create the next, you know, phenom cyclist. If it happens, great. But the goal is to provide opportunity and experience that bike racing is viable. I really, really, really hope that I can work with our sponsors and the community to create scholarships for riders who stick with it all the way through high school um, so that they can then have, you know, a scholarship through LA Sweat to take to school and use however they need. Um, Helping them with developing, you know, presentations and interviews to get on cycling teams for university, if that's what they want to do. Um, Writing letters of recommendation. Like, it's not just a cycling mentorship program. Um, like this weekend, we're going to just go hang out. (laughs) Um, so it's very much more than just a junior bike team. Yeah, that's great. Let's circle back to the USAC fees for juniors for races. Let's, let's talk about, let's give some context to that. If, you know, cause it's, we're not talking about a ton of money relatively, Relatively, but, no, not for you and I. Right. So let's just talk about that. Like what, what, what would wipe that all away? Like how much money would we have to raise for juniors across the United States to make race entry free? I have no what do you idea. think that is? Let's guess. It's $100,000? Or less. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because the, the, and the, the license fee is not that much. Right. But it's like it for juniors, it's like it's like five dollars, right? It's it's pretty low, right? I don't know exactly what it is. I think but it's I, low. Like, for it to be free for so long, I just I just don't personally. It doesn't sit well with me to make money off of kids. Yeah, that's it. That's it's more of like an ethical, moral thing than it is anything else. Yeah, but yeah, right, like a hundred thousand dollars and. We can go back to free licenses for kids. Great. Right. I'm going to think about that one. 
Kelly, what's what's next for you in the fi- in the next five years? Wh- where do you see oh. LA Sweat going? <laughs> I know this is this is big stuff. <laughs> um, well, next year will be ten years, so that'll be our ten year anniversary in twenty twenty four, which is crazy. It's a big deal. That's a it's big a deal. Big deal. Um, I'm really proud of that. It's really all I can see through right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would about- love, like, I would love to grow the team. I would love to provide them, you know, with European racing opportunities. I know what that entails. I know the cost of that. Um, and you know, right now that's just not a, a viable, like it wouldn't be good business. Yeah. Right. Like you could race a team two times in Europe and blow through your whole budget Right. Or you can have 30 race days in the U.S. and not blow your whole budget. <laughs> and have a whole lot of fun. And have a whole lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. What does the season look like for you this year? When will you guys start and, uh, and sort of end? We're late bloomers. We, yeah. we don't need to race from January to October. Um, so we will have team camp in April. Um, and then the first race for us looks to be Sunny King, which I think is like May 8th. Okay. And then, then it's nonstop until about Labor Day weekend. And will we see you all at the Intelligentsia Cup? Of course. I live here. Great. Great. <laughs> well, I need to make sure that I, I get out this year to that one. I'm, I'm usually just not in town, I think. That seems like such a weird time to not be in town. Yeah. When there's I so know. much going on in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Kelly... Um, so what was the question in my psych profile that you omitted? Oh, it was the second question. Coffee or tea? No. Oh, beer or wine? Beer or wine. Ah, so that's pretty cool, right? You deleted it it as well. And I deleted it. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Like mine's, right? Yeah, don't drink, kids. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask that question anymore. That's good, Kelly. Any shout outs that you'd like to give to uh, your teammates or partners? Uh, now's the time to do it. Oh, now's the time, everyone. Um, mm. All of my riders, I love them like family, um, and honestly, all of the partners that just believe in our program and what we're trying to do, not only in the sport of cycling, but the community of cycling. It's really important to me that those, those things align. Great. And awesome. We have partners, you know, butter up SRAM a little bit, but we have partners like SRAM (laughs) that really do believe in that. And so it's great. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everyone that's uh, supporting Ellie Sweat and Kelly Sam and her journey to, uh, improve the the face of women cycling in the world let's hope so well kelly you are awesome thank you for doing what you do and we really we are honored to be a part of your team and your program and your mission so thanks for choosing us thanks for letting us uh, come along for the ride and thanks for sharing your story yeah thanks for having me and just as a note if anybody does buy merch or even last year's bikes all of those funds go directly to the riders great. We will put all of that information in the show notes below. uh, So you can check that out online or wherever you view your content. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.